Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode. What's up, y'all? Let's get right into it. The prison riot between the whites and the blacks in High Desert in 2003. There's a blood on the yard from PDL, Pasadena Denver Lanes. I may, as, I may as well not say his name. What difference does it make? I know who he is. Supposedly, according to the whites, he stole a CD that they had sitting on a weight bench or whatever, right there on the yard. They set some CDs down. You walk around the yard with your with your headphones on and your walk, man. Got your CDs at this time. It's in 2000. And so the white boy set his CDs down on the bench somewhere. Now, he swears that they came up missing and for whatever reason, he believes that the dude from PDL took him. I don't know if he supposedly saw him take him or what. Now, this is on a C upper yard. Remember I told you they have C lower and they have C upper yard, the, the level four 180s. I'm on a C lower yard at this time. I already did time on the upper yard. I'm on the lower yard. I'll explain later how I got to the lower yard from the upper yard. Now, the white boys approach the bloods, all of the bloods on the yard, but mainly their main guys, and tell them, man, your boy, your, your, he took our CDs. He took my boy's CDs. Again, stealing, being a thief, is a violation in prison, a monumental violation. They see thieving as they see a child molester, as they see a snitch. A thief is the same as a snitch? Yes. In prison, yes. So they tell the bloods, and this is the protocol, take care, take care of this dude, man. Get him off the yard. Because we, we know he took, now the Bloods, they don't come tell the Crips. They don't tell the other blacks on the yard that there's an incident that just transpired and there's tension with the blacks and the whites. It's not the Bloods and the whites. If the Bloods have a right, we all are involved as the, the black community. That's how it works. It's not going to be a riot with the Southsiders and the Crips. It's going to be a riot with the Southsiders and the Blacks. There's not going to be a riot with the white boys and the Bloods. There's going to be a riot with the white boys and all of the Blacks. We all must get involved when it's someone of another race. So the Bloods, they're keeping this somewhat of a secret that they have this tension going on with the whites. No one else knows about this because the whites didn't approach all the blacks. They only approached a few bloods and told them what happened. So the bloods are telling the whites, we don't believe it. We talked to our homeboy. He said he didn't take the CDs. I, I, I don't know if he took them or not. I don't know. But for whatever reason, they really believe that he did. But he's telling the bloods, his homeboys, his big homies, man, I didn't take them, man. So, I guess the Bloods believed them. I don't guess. I know that they believed them. And if they believe their homeboy, then, yeah, they're going to tell the whites, we're not going to attack our homeboy. We're not going to stab him up and get him off the yard. This, this somebody that they eat with, exercise with every day, in a cell with them, this they boy. It don't matter. If he's wrong, he's wrong. But so he's convinced them that he's not wrong, that he hadn't, he didn't take the CDs. They believe him again. They believe him. Whatever was said, they believe him. So they tell the whites, we're not doing nothing to him. We're not getting him off in any yard. Y'all do what y'all got to do. But they didn't tell the rest of the blacks that this is going on. So the whites say, okay. Fine. Y'all not going to get him off the yard? They sent the call out, apparently, to each other. Take down the blacks. Stab them up. 
riot, kick it off. Someone stole from us, and they're not doing anything about it. You know the rules. We must get off on them. So the day before the riot, the whites come out of the building. It's yard time. Yard time. Yard is normally about 9 o'clock in the morning. So the whites come out, and sometimes the police have been known to do a little sneak attack, a little sneak search. So as you're coming out of the building, going to yard, the police are lined up outside the building, unbeknownst to you. And as soon as you step out the door, they say, hey, come here, come here, and put you against the wall and strip you out, butt naked, on the yard in front of everybody. They're trying to catch people slipping with knives. This is a secret search, a, a, a sudden search, a surprise search. And so the day before the riot, the blacks come out and the Mexicans come out and the whites come out the yard. But the police stripped out the blacks and then the Mexicans, the Southsiders, stripped them naked and they found a lot of knives on blacks. Because now, finally, blacks have somewhat got the word. They're finally getting it. And this is what I'm saying. Sometimes we don't focus. We're not paying attention. Too busy game banging against each other. And we're not paying attention that these people are forming and plotting against us right now. But somehow, finally, they, catch, they caught the word that there's tension amongst the whites and what's going on. So the day before, the blacks come out. They have a lot of knives. This is a level 4180. And the white boys up here, tell you the truth, this is where I learned to respect the white boys, right here in High Desert. Because before then, I never respected them. Because in the county jail, they used to get beat up, raped, beat, stabbed, robbed. It was so bad for them in the L.A. County Jail that the police had to give them their own module. They couldn't even come around us. So I never had a lot of respect for them. I'm like, man, these fools weak. How did slavery ever happen? However, when I got to High Desert, that began to change. Because as soon as I got there, I saw the whites being extremely structured and extremely violent towards each other. They were committing murders. High Desert being a very racist prison, as I said before, they don't even hide the fact that they are racist. They don't even hide it. I've heard Hispanic COs in another prison, when I got to Tehachapi Shoe one time, the CO told me, man, I used to work in High Desert. I had to get up out of there. This is a CO. He free. He, he's one of them. This is their brethren. This is his brethren. He said in a parking lot up there at High Desert, they have parking spots for the white COs, man. I said, what? He said, yeah. So, like, y'all got to get at the back of the bus. Everyone who's not a white CO. Even though they're all COs, they're all free. They, they're not inmates. These are police. This is how racist they are. They racist against other COs that's not white. Can you imagine what's going on against the inmates? So the day before this riot, the police, they strip out the blacks. The blacks haven't caught word that something's about to go down. Perhaps there's a lot of tension. They, they strap. Everyone has knives. They strip the blacks out. The police take a lot of blacks to the hole, and they find a lot of knives on them. They strip the Hispanics out. But they never stripped out the whites. They never stripped out the white boys. Now, this is going to be important later. Pay attention to what I'm telling you. They never stripped out the white boys. They stripped out the blacks and the Mexicans. Later on, we asked the police, what happened? Why come y'all stripped us out and not the whites? They said, well, we had got word that there was tension on the yard, but we got the wrong word. 
we got wrong, we got word that there was tension between the blacks and the South Siders. That's why we stripped out the blacks and the South Siders and not the whites. Oh, is that what happened? Okay. So the blacks are going to the hole the day before the riot. They done knocked them off. The police knew what they were doing. I, to this day, I know that. They done took them to the hole, found these knives on them. And the whites, meanwhile, were able to get their knives out to the yard. Because they never got stripped out. So the, so the whites got knives buried out on the yard. The blacks, we really have no knives. Because, except, what, well, what may have already been buried out there before. But on this day, we took a lot of losses with a lot of strong dudes who was coming to put in work. They were ready. They ended up in the hole. So the next day, they called Yard again. Yard! Now, the blacks are coming out, and they don't have knives. Why? Well, just because the day before, we all caught word. We all know what's going on. They stripped out all the blacks and found the knives and took many of them to the hole, everyone to the hole that they found the knife on. So blacks are, you know, they're, they're a little bit hesitant to carry a knife out to the yard right now, fearing another sneak attack and going to the hole for nothing without being able to use the knife. So the blacks are coming out hoping that nothing kicks off on this day without knives. Meanwhile, the, wh the, the whites already have all of their knives buried on the yard from the day before. Right? So the blacks are out there playing basketball, doing pull-ups on the pull-up bars, playing P-knuckle at the card tables on the yard. Someone is still paying attention because there's still their attention on the yard but they're, they're not focused the way that they should be. Particularly since they got word that it's tension on the yard. What are y'all doing? It's 17 whites, according to the paperwork that I eventually saw. It was 17 whites and I believe 56 blacks out there. Because even though this is a white boy prison, high desert... Is what you call a white boy prison. Again, they make no bones about that. Lancaster State Prison would be considered a black person's prison. The warden was black. I was in Lancaster in 1996, as I alluded to before. The warden was black. All the sergeants black. The lieutenant's black. The captain's black. The person that works in the laundry is black. The person that cooks the food is black. Everybody was black in Lancaster. I don't know about now, but in 1996, everybody was black. And in High Desert... It's just the opposite. Everybody's white. You can go years without seeing one black CO. Years. I was up there for seven years. I know. So this is the white people's prison. They don't like black people. They don't like Hispanic people. So anyway... The blacks are on the yard, and as far as I'm concerned, they're nowhere near focused enough considering what's going on, considering the tension on the yard, considering that these boys believe that this dude done took their CDs. 16 or 17 whites, 56 blacks. They attack. The whites do. They start coming at the blacks with knives, and they're yelling, fucking nigga, kill, kill, kill him, fucking nigga. They're saying that word. As they coming, a lot of them have two knives. The white boys, they got two knives because they know they're outnumbered. Even though it's their prison, it's only a few of them because they don't go to prison. They commit crimes. They just don't go to prison. Welcome to America. So they're short in every prison. Almost non-existent. Welcome to America. So they know that they're short on the yard. 
So they got two knives. I, they got two knives apiece. And they're attacking the blacks. They're yelling. But the blacks, since they still have strength in numbers, they're not running and all that. Not at all. They're fighting back. And even in many cases, you would say, got the best of them, even though they had weapons. But the white boys, they were no joke. They get my respect in high desert. They were structured, they were strong, and they were killing things. They were killing shit. You violated, they were ready to attack their own people. It didn't matter who it was. In fact, they even got into it with the Southsiders up there. Normally, they're under the Southsiders' thumb, the white boys. Everywhere you go, the, the Southsiders essentially run them. This is the one prison where the white boy stood up to the South Siders and said, we'll have a riot with y'all too. We don't care. They were saving face in high desert. They were putting in work. I can't deny it. But for every action, there is a reaction. And the blacks had to respond. And we had to respond promptly and let them know there were going to be big time repercussions behind that sneak attack, behind those actions. There, there was also tension between the Crips and the Bloods. Over the Crips believing that the Bloods had not informed them soon enough about what was going on. That you were supposed to come to the Blacks immediately and let us know if there was any tension, since all of our lives are on the line. But there had to be repercussions behind these white boys' actions. There has to be a response every time there's an action. And so we went on lockdown for three months. And I guess the police thinking, that we're weak and soft, not going to do much. Foolishly, they let us off lockdown. If there was a response by black people, let's call it a bloody response. High desert level four riots between the blacks and the whites. Part two slash bloodshed coming soon.